Good evening. Uh, we present the news summary. It is later this evening that the verdict in the murder trial against Carlos Cafrin will be delivered. Cafrin is on a trial for the murder of a three-year-old girl who died in May last year. At the time of the victim's death, Cafrin was in a relationship with her mother. The victim was declared dead at the English River Health Center after Cafrin had brought her there when under his care she was showing signs of being unwell. The trial started about a month ago. Local businessman uh, Viraf uh, Iwadzia has been released from custody after being on a remand for about 16 months. The case against him originally had over 80 charges but were recently reduced to three after out-of-court uh, negotiations. He pleaded guilty to the three charges being money laundering, failure to lodge tax returns, and failure to register a business. He is to pay a total of 100,000 rupees in fines and a sentence of two years imprisonment suspended for two years. The Seychelles Revenue Commission has said that all operations at its office at Maison Colette will resume uh, tomorrow, Friday. Its operation and that of other entities operating in the building were affected today as its workers had to evacuate the building because of a suspected gas order. The Fire and uh, Rescue Service Agency, were responded, responded, which, which responded to the incident around 8.40 a.m., said that its officers inspected inside the building and its surroundings and did not detect any gas order and said they are not considering this incident as an act of terrorism. President Wevel Romkalawan will join other heads of state in Kigali, Rwanda on Sunday this week for the swearing-in ceremony of President Paul Kagame following his re-election as President of Rwanda. During President uh, Romkalawan's absence, Vice President Ahmed Afif will fulfill the duties of the presidency. The civil engagement platform, CEPS, is calling on government to reconsider its decision to withdraw from the East African standby force. The chairman of CEPS, uh, Alvin Laurence, says that the civil society will be the biggest loser if Seychelles withdraw from the, if Seychelles withdraw from the force it has been engaged with for the past 10 years. CEPS made the appeal in a letter which dates uh, back uh, to September last year. The withdrawal of Seychelles participation in the East African Standby Force that will take effect next year in October will greatly affect the civil society sector. We are convinced that it will also affect the police force and the military, the other two components that they focus on. But the civil society sector will be the main one being more affected because of the fact that we've been the group benefiting a lot through trainings and exposure. We've also had our locals, those leaders in the civil society sector who have been able to work and gain experience there. Last year, we had over 20 individuals in Seychelles being trained in, with East African standby force. This year, we've already surpassed the number 30, and there's more training coming up for the rest of the year. And uh, we hope that the decision can be reconsidered because the benefits that we get outweigh the contribution that the country has to pay to be in East African standby force. Do you think that the government will compromise on uh, its decision? Last year, we shared our views and made the recommendation that we remain in East African standby force. We are in constant dialogue with the government, and we will definitely uh, bring the issue on the table in our next meeting with the vice president to be able to discuss and see what will be the best solution. We understand that it, a country needs to revise its engagement with those international institutions every now and then. But as for the civil society sector, the East African standby force cannot be replaced overnight, and it will require other organizations to 
make new provisions if they are to accommodate where the East African standby force is already assisting us. SEPS uh, is also calling on its members to nominate volunteers as potential candidates for its annual volunteer award. The ceremony will take place in December and nominations will be accepted until the end of September. It's all about recognizing volunteers and their contribution towards society and also organization, um, their contribution that they have contributed towards the society, the difference they have made in somebody's life, in our community, in the society in general. So they have invested their time and energy voluntarily. So now it's the time for us to recognize those efforts, those contributions. The fifth edition of uh, this year's uh, Youth Festival will uh, be held from the 9th to the 18th of August. During a press conference uh, this morning, the Chief Executive Officer of the Seychelles National Youth Council, Albert Duncan, stated that the activities will highlight the achievements and future plans uh, for the youth of Seychelles. The opening ceremony of the Youth Festival will be held tomorrow Friday, 9th August, at the Victoria Gymnasium. And with this, we have come to the end of this news summary. Thank you for your attention.